In the previous video, I introduced these patterns and we turned them into a numerical, uh, a numerical pattern, a numerical sequence, by counting up the number of matchsticks at each point. Okay, so I could represent this pattern uh, with these numbers. Okay, so what we're going to be doing now is trying to find a way of generalizing the sequence. And that is where we come into the realm of what is called the nth term. So, if I look at the pattern that I've got here, this 5, 9, 13, and it's continuing, I'm adding on 4 each time. Okay, so adding on 4. Now, if we think back to when we were looking at the straight line equations, okay, then... If you remember, we had the pattern where we're adding on the same number each time. So one along, and in this case we'd be going four up, one along, four up, one along, four up, one along, four up. Okay? And that number that I was going up by was called the gradient. And how it is connected here is the way it's the same thing, it's the same process where the gradient, that number four in this case, goes in front of the x in the equation of the line. But instead of using x, we're going to use n. Okay, so instead of 4x, 4n. The reason why we use n rather than x for when we're looking at sequences um, is because we want n to represent a specific number, specific whole number, really. Now, it's not just 4n though, because there was also that part from the straight lines about the where it crossed the y-axis, that y-intercept. How do we find it? Well, there's an easy way to find it, and that's to do 5, the first term of the sequence, and then subtract that number, subtract the difference that we're adding up each time. So 5 take away 4 is 1. And so it is a plus one on the end. Because effectively what we're doing is we're taking a step back to where it crosses the y-axis. So we do five take away four. So let's see how this is done in the next part. So we've got three, five, seven. Do the same process, we're adding on two each time. So the two is the number that goes in front of the n. And then I look at the first term, take away that difference. 3 take away 2, that's 1 again, so it's plus 1. Let's look at this one. So this time I'm adding on 5 each time. So it's the 5 that goes in front of the n. And then 10 take away 5 is 5, so positive 5. So that is how I could find the nth term for a sequence. Okay? So, let's say I had another one, and get rid of the final one here. Let's say instead of, um, keep it the same colour, instead of that sequence that I had there, let's say I had a decreasing sequence. Let's say I had something like um, 12, 9, 6, 3, and so on. So each time I'm subtracting 3. So that minus 3, like the 2 and the 4 before it, will go in front of the n. So it's minus 3n. And then the first term, take away the difference. So 12 take away minus 3. Two minuses next to each other make a positive. So that's actually 12 plus 3 is 15. So 12 take away minus 3 is 15. So it's a plus 15 on the end. And these are the nth terms for the sequences. And in the next video, we're going to use those to determine right, what will be the 50th term, what will be the 100th term, because that's what they're there to do.